Hey guys, uh, we're making another video about the whole Mark Wade lawsuit, uh, and that's because this situation is now evolving quite quickly. <laughs> I mean, a lot's going down. It's insane because the last six months, it seemed like there was, you know, back in the fall, there was a lot of stuff going down, and then nothing for months and months and months, and now here we are, and everything is going down. All right, so... Um, I would invite everyone that looks at this information to, you know, put on your, your, your BS detector. I don't know what I want to call it. Like <laughs> the spirit of discernment. Uh, you've got to look at some of this stuff and realize that, um, not everything's true. There's a lot of information that contradicts itself. Um, and then there's also the what, so what factor, right? A lot of this stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, but it, it, if you get enough of it out there, uh, this, it, it, it becomes confusing. It muddies the waters. It makes everything confusing. Um, so Mark, Mark Zaid today on Twitter was sort of, uh, spiking the football essentially because of, uh, the, the deposition and some of the, the paperwork that came out, I guess the recording, the interview that happened with the publisher of Antarctic press and essentially the publisher said that Mark Wade had nothing to do with his decision. Now, I'm not sure that ultimately, I'm not sure that that even matters what he says. Uh, the paper trail probably matters more. Having said that, if you say something in a deposition under oath, I have to believe that that means something. You would think that means something, saying something under oath, as opposed to saying something not under oath. What really is the truth? I don't know. Um, but regardless, I think the truth in this kind of instance, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's inconsequential to the facts because the facts, you can't look at them any other way. Uh, so Mark said he posted this. This is another thing today. And it just, you just got to roll your eyes. Um, I thought it was a joke that everyone said that he was a super lawyer. <laughs> this was some kind of Mark Zaid joke. No, he actually thinks of himself as a super lawyer because uh, apparently there's a website called superlawyers.com. <laughs> uh, it kind of reminds me of one of those business websites. Like I, I get these phone calls all the time. Hey, do you want to be listed on our website for just best businesses? Okay. Like anybody can make a website. This is, you know, let, let's be honest here. I mean, come on. Yeah. So he says, I'm honored to announce that I have continued my streak starting in 2009 oh basically he's been paying his uh, yearly due uh of being named a washington it doesn't say uh it doesn't say the it says uh a uh, washington dc super lawyer quotation mark for an administrative law category this reflects uh inclusion within the top five percent now what kind of uh <laughs> award makes you the top five percent of super lawyers I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, this is this is just to emphasize how obnoxious this is. Now, Zaid, I've been really quite shocked because he's spent most of his time publicly uh, just being annoying on Twitter about the law, the lawsuit. But he's been sp spent very little time actually preparing any of the paperwork. So I did find that really interesting. All right, so we got to have a tale of two articles, and so one, of course, is going to be on Bleeding Cool because. Bleeding Cool not only is just garbage to your website, uh, it's also <laughs> happens to be very pro Mark Wade and very anti basically anybody else that crosses mainstream comics. So there's that. Uh, and so they, they, they published this article the other day. Antarctic publisher states under oath that Mark Wade didn't prevent them from publishing Jawbreakers. Yep, and then they go down and they actually go through the questions and the answers. And the publisher did say, in his own words, that Mark Wade did not, uh, you know, it wasn't Mark Wade's decision. Basically, it was 100% his own decision. Now, if you think about this, what what business owner, what publisher would say, yes, uh, a, a third party made the decision for me. Like, think this through. Nobody's accusing Mark Wade of going into Antarctic Press and making a decision. 
uh, you know, outside of the owner's uh, consent, essentially. The way that tortious interference works, it's not like you jump, you, you run in the room and you've got a gun to their head and you make them make the decision. It's that you pressure them to make the decision. For me, this makes no difference. No matter what they say, it doesn't matter. The facts matter. So yes, he made the decision himself as the publisher 100%. Okay, that was his decision 100%. He had problems with the conduct online of Richard Meyer. He had problems with that, his own conduct. Okay, however, he broke a contract. He backed out of a contract. Uh, verbal, written, otherwise, notarized, I don't know. It doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. There was a contract. It was an understanding that everybody knew that is exactly why Mark Wade felt the need to make a phone call because he was under the impression he knew that there was a contract. That's why he called. Everybody knew there was a contract. Nobody's uh, disputing that fact. On the other side, um, th- these are private messages. And this is what uh, this, this whole thing gets so hairy to me. Um, yeah, this this uh th- this definitely gets it. I don't know, it, it's hard, man. Private messages. I I don't know what what the courts reaches. I don't know what lawyers can look into or if they can request, uh, you know, private correspondence like the text messages. That makes sense, you know, because it was between the publisher of the company and Mark Wade. It's relevant to the case. Totally makes sense. This was something that one of the Dunn brothers, I want to say this was Ben, maybe, Dunn, uh, and he messaged that umbrella guy. And essentially, um, you know, here this is now, now this is public information. Uh, This is um, essentially, in his statement, he says that it was basically interference and it had something to do with Mark Wade and that's kind of how he ends it off says, I want to thank you for your fair assessment of the situation. So this is uh, written to that umbrella guy. Truth be told, AP has always been on the fringe of the comics industry, yet somehow we survive. Uh, Apparently, barely. (laughs) Looking at the numbers, like, they were were struggling. I know it's hard for comic uh, publishers everywhere. Uh, He continues, we had high hopes for the success of Jawbreakers, but the virulent attack on my brother from the SJW side was unprecedented. Yeah, they they can do that. That's there's a tendency for it, things to get unprecedented <laughs> when it comes to SJWs. Okay, something we had never experienced in our 33 years of business. It was like Pearl Harbor for us. You have to understand there were personal considerations as well. My brother's decision was heartbreaking because after the Wade call, he was afraid of the future uh, of some of his friends who worked for Marvel. All right, so. Side note, I've heard this before, um, you know, slightly different circumstances, but somebody wants to work for Marvel or they do work for Marvel or DC for that matter. Uh, But at the same time, they sympathize with or they have friends with people that are either in Comicsgate or adjacent to Comicsgate or just in indie comics in general and have some beef. They have beef with Marvel and DC. Now, people are afraid. If that's enough to make you afraid to say anything or to associate with people because you don't want to be blacklisted. That's a problem. The, the strangest thing is I really believe that there's such a small number of really, really loud activists that have the ear of Marvel. They're leading them around by the collar. And so, you know, they're willing to blacklist people if some people on Twitter freak out. If Twitter didn't exist, this whole thing wouldn't even be at the same, I I don't even believe (laughs) the world. I think the world would be a completely better place if Twitter didn't exist at all. It definitely amplifies the insanity, uh, especially, especially for activists. They figured out how to use it and to make themselves seem bigger, more numerous than they are in reality. So when somebody says that they're worried about friends, you know, getting work at Marvel, actually, I don't have any sympathy because (laughs) You're basically saying that you need to, uh, you need to be on the activist's good side 
in order for a major comic book publisher to be willing to publish you. This is crazy. It's, those activists should not be controlling the industry. And all it would take is some publishers to stand up to the, the extremists that are in the group. The, the ones, they're obsessed with Twitter. They're obsessed with uh, you know policing people's language and their thoughts and anything like that. Why should they be controlling things? They're not the ones to fear. If you stood up, if you put your foot down and you, you stood up and you continued to stand up, none of this would have been a problem. So it does make me a little upset because this is the whole thing that I got into to Comicscape for. This is why I started making videos on the topic uh, because somebody had a publishing deal and they got scared out of it. It's incredibly frustrating. Just want someone to, you know, don't bend the knee. Pub publish a book if you want to publish the book. If you think it's going to be financially beneficial, then just publish it. Ignore what the activists have to say about it. They don't care anyway. They're not buying the books anyway. All right. <laughs> it's a little bit of rant there. Okay, so he continues. Normally, we would have ignored such attacks, but it began to intrude on his other job. And uh, that is when he had to make the decision to cancel the book. That's unfortunate that crazy people... I, I mean, I get it. That would be That would be tough. It would be. I don't believe that it was better off... I don't believe he was better off. I don't believe AP was better off by uh, by bowing down to it. If the problem was Richard C. Meyer's conduct, I feel like they should have had a discussion with him. I haven't seen, I mean, I haven't read every single square inch of the deposition. I have not seen anything uh, where they addressed his conduct, where they talked to him about his conduct. I think that would be important. If that was really the problem, why not have that discussion? You know, is this, I mean, this is, this is business. I mean, I understand that that could definitely be a problem. If you, if you're acting a fool online, I, I'm not necessarily saying that, uh, that Richard Meyer was, but in their, in their eyes, he was okay. So address it then talk to him about it, solve it. This is where I, I, this falls flat for me. This excuse that it was his own conduct. And this is, you know, what, what super lawyer was so proud about was his conduct. If that was really the problem, they could have addressed it. They could have addressed it pretty easily, but instead they didn't, they just ended the contract. That was it. They broke the contract uh, it has, has nothing to do with his conduct. It has everything to do with how his conduct affects the radicalists, <laughs> right? They're the ones swaying things and making people make the decisions that they do. It would just be so nice to see someone put their foot down. All right. So he says it's a no win situation uh, for us. So we thought it best to just remain silent. This of course led to much speculation, uh, of the course of action we took, I wonder if we had stuck to our guns or if we had kept his nose out of it, would we would we be having this discussion? Yep. He admits that Wade did something. Now, again, I don't think that this matters. I don't think that this private message uh, needed to be leaked. Uh, I would imagine that there were there are probably a whole lot more just like it. Uh, obviously if you, if, if he's open enough to have in, have this discussion with essentially a stranger online, uh, who reports and makes videos and things, uh, I mean, he's probably talked to other people. I would bet, I would bet money. I'm not a betting man, but I'm, I'm positive. There has to be other, other, uh, information out there, DMS and so on. I don't think it matters though. Honestly, it's not the point. <laughs> Right. What he says one thing, he says another thing. They contradict each other, but does that really matter? Um, I don't know that it does. Okay. He continues. If nothing else, it exposed a seedy underbelly of the comics industry. So at least some good came out of this. A lot of people have been talking about this seedy underbelly. Um, a lot of people saw this kind of thing coming, right? Uh, so I'm currently not sure if uh, good has come of it because this lawsuit needs to be won. <laughs> really, frankly, it has to be uh, for the future of being published and having freedom. 
this needs to Mark Wade has to be uh, the book has to be thrown at him. He has to be charged. I don't know how this works. It's a civil case, but he he needs to be sued. He needs to lose. He he has to. Uh, it is it's ex- extremely important. Uh, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, will there be any publishers that put their foot down and are just not afraid? <laughs> Honestly, I think that's the key. Like just just shrug it off, spend a week offline, and it'll blow over because they're going to get upset about something else the next week and the next week, or they're going to hate you and you know who cares if you're making money there are people that were not buying your product anyway uh i digress this is my book downcast we have passed twenty thousand dollars that means everybody this book is going to be quality we're talking perfect bound uh upgraded paper stock i forget the actual uh, like thickness of the paper the covers are going to be matte but with a spot gloss finish uh and if we reach twenty five thousand dollars it's going to get a foil stamp this thing is going to be beautiful so thank you very much and i will talk to you next time